Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to class. Good to see uh, your pics and your names and good to see Jeffina in front of me. It's good to have a student in front while I'm teaching. Okay, let's begin. Now. Can we begin with a word of prayer? So can I ask uh, Zelatoli to lead us in prayer, please? Yes, sure, ma'am. Let us pray. Father God, we come before your presence in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for this brand new day. As we begin the session, Lord, I pray that Holy Spirit, you will give grace to our teacher to teach the word of God according to your will and also give a heart, a strength and the wisdom to teach, Lord. And also, Lord, uh, I want to thank you for all my uh, classmates here. Father God, I pray that, Lord Jesus, you will give us uh, teachable heart and also Holy Spirit as our teacher teaches help us so that we can understand Lord God and also Lord I pray for good network so that there will be no hindrances Lord and Lord God help us to be focused attentive in class Lord you help us Holy Spirit in Jesus mighty name Amen Thank you Sela Uh Jeffina you can just close that door otherwise we'll have the noise from the first year thank you Okay, so last week we looked at uh, the book, The Kingdom of God. I hope you have the PDF open before you. And uh, uh, we looked at uh, chapter one. We looked at the introduction to the kingdom of God. And um, in chapter one, we saw that, you know, uh, God has planned the kingdom. And he had planned it even before uh, the foundations of the earth, even before he created the world he had. Uh, uh, the kingdom in his mind he had, he had planned um, to establish his kingdom here on earth. And uh, by establishing his kingdom here on earth, he was establishing, establishing his kingdom reign, his kingdom rule, uh, his kingdom domain here on uh, earth. And when we, we see how he prepared his kingdom, um, how he created um, uh, the world, how he created Adam and Eve, and he gave them the dominion, uh, the authority um, over uh, the earth to establish his domain, his kingdom rule, his kingdom presence, his kingdom government here on the earth. And we also uh, saw the important thing that, you know, um, the uniqueness of the kingdom of God is that uh, each one of us are sons and daughters in the kingdom of God okay uh, and God has made us heirs with him and co-heirs with uh, Jesus Christ and that is our position and that is our uh, authority and that is so uh, wonderful that is so powerful um, that is so enlightening to us uh, and it is um, it just reveals the very heart of God his love for us um, the way he looks at us the way he thinks of us um, not as his slaves, not as his subjects of his kingdom, not somebody to do his, uh, just do his uh, will, but here we are, uh, his uh, children co heirs with Christ, heirs uh, of God, uh, establishing his rule, his authority, his kingdom uh, here on the earth. So we operate out of that kingdom mindset. We operate out of that kingdom identity and we operate out of that kingdom uh, perspective in, in everything that we do. And not only in just ministry uh, or when we come to church on Sunday that we operate out of a kingdom mindset or a kingdom perspective, but we operate uh, out of a kingdom mindset and perspective um, every moment of our lives. You know, whether we are eating, cooking, uh, you know, doing home chores or uh, working the secular field or working uh, uh, at church or doing ministry, whatever, or doing business, uh, we operate out of a kingdom mindset and a kingdom uh, perspective. Okay. Uh, so we'll move on to lesson two. The, uh, uh, if anyone, uh, you know, took time to read lesson one and you have any questions, do you have any questions? You can ask now regarding chapter one. No questions? Okay. Um, we'll move on to chapter two, the king and the kingdom. Okay. Um, 
you know uh, we when we uh, when we think about god we perceive god uh, in in different ways okay we perceive god as a father we perceive god as a friend we perceive him as savior what else do you perceive him as what else do you perceive god as how do you look at god how do you understand him you look at him as a father as a friend as a savior yes look as a king thank you zilatoli uh, yes lubega as the creator of the earth and heavens yes as a creator what else how else do we perceive god yes sitikenu ma'am as an ad sorry ma'am as an advocate like as a lawyer he is our lawyer in front of god our representative okay our representative he intercedes on behalf of us, of us. he is our advocate okay so bashi says as our guide okay uh, as our protector yes thank you subashi uh, as a healer a provider uh, you know as our shield a defender Uh, our wisdom our strength our hope our encouragement so we perceive god in so many different ways but it's important uh, you know to know that the bible also as uh, it reveals god as king as the eternal king as the omnipotent uh, king as a powerful ruler who's uh, whose kingdom is from everlasting to everlasting from one generation to another other uh, generation his kingdom is unending his his kingdom is unshakable so we need to also uh, relate to god in this perspective we always look at god as our father friend savior Uh, you know as a provider as a healer uh, you know as one who is our wisdom one who gives us the hope all that is uh, uh, as a word all that is good but we also need to look at god as the eternal king as a powerful ruler uh, the one whose uh, kingdom is uh, unshakable uh, eternal from generation to uh, generation and because when we understand god as king then we will also be uh, able to understand how he operates in his kingdom and why is it important for us to understand how he operates in in his kingdom is because he has entrusted his kingdom to us okay of course he created adam and eve and he said subdue and have dominion but that's not just for adam and eve but that's for the church uh, in today's world that is for each one of us so you and i each one of us you know um uh, have been given the dominion the authority uh, uh the kingdom to rule and to govern here on earth we are to establish god's kingdom here on earth in our present day in our present generation and so it's important for us to look at god in this perspective that he is king and uh, how is his kingdom so that we can when we understand this perspective we will operate out of this perspective then we will know who we are that uh, we are prince and princesses we are uh, rulers that uh, you know and god has given us the authority and he has given us the power okay uh, david shares a few facets of god as king in psalm uh, 145 verses 1 and verses 10 to 13 so can somebody quickly read uh, psalm chapter 145 verse 1 and verses 10 to 13 please anyone psalm can? chapter 145 verse 1 10 to 13 i will exalt you my god o king and i will bless your name forever and ever all your works shall praise you o lord and your saints shall bless you they shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power to make known to the son of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations amen thank you jefina so here we see that um, you know the psalmist is asking us or uh, extolling us uh, to praise and worship god as king okay so he's saying you know extol god extol god as a king and he also says that people will speak of the greatness of the 
kingdom. They shall bless, bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. They shall talk about the power of your kingdom. Uh, they shall speak of your mighty acts, uh, the glorious majesty of your kingdom. And then he goes on to say that uh, God's kingdom is everlasting kingdom and his dominion endures through all generations. Okay, so here he's just extolling, he's just praising, he's just worshipping uh, God's kingdom. He's saying, how great is your kingdom, O God. And we too need to recognize and worship God as king. And we need to uh, worship him for his, for his everlasting um, kingdom. Okay, um, and uh, he goes on, the psalmist goes on to say in uh, Psalm chapter 47 verses 6 and 7. Can somebody read that please? Psalm chapter 47 verse 6 and 7. It's in your notes on the uh, bottom of page 15 and top of page 16. Psalm 47, 6 and 7. Psalm chapter 47 verses 6 and 7. <coughs> Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. 7. For God is the King of all the earth, sing to Him a psalms of praise. Thank you. So, um, you know, when we worship God, um, uh, you know, the psalmist is saying, uh, why don't you do it this way? Do it as, you know, as you're singing praises to the king so when we praise god when we worship him we need to sing and adore and praise him uh, because he is a uh, king and this is some sometimes we miss out this aspect in our minds when we worship god you know we forget that he is king and we forget to give him the glory the adoration the uh, the worship uh, the majesty that uh, the honor that he is uh, do. So he's saying when we sing, we need to sing with this heart attitude that God, you are king and I'm singing praises uh, to the king. And, uh, you know, God, this is my tribute. Even as I praise and worship you, this is a tribute that I'm bringing to you. This is my offering. This is the way I'm acknowledging you as king, uh, not only on this earth, but also as king over my life. So David is sharing this facet of, uh, you know, uh, praising and worshiping God as king. So having this heart attitude when we praise and worship God, that we praise him uh, as he is king, uh, just saying, God, you know, I'm bringing my tribute, I'm bringing my offering, I'm just acknowledging you as uh, the great king whose kingdom is unshakable, whose kingdom endures to all generation, and also I, um, you know, acknowledge you as king over my life. So even as, um, you know, uh, we praise and worship God, uh, we can even, you know, even when we pray, uh, we can acknowledge God as king. And that is what uh, we read in Psalms chapter 44, verse 4. So can somebody read that, please? Psalm 44, verse 4. It's on page number 16. You are my king, O oh God. Come on, victories. Thank you. So here the psalmist is saying that, you know, uh, when you are praying, uh, you remember that you're praying to a king who's the omnipotent um, ruler. Okay. And uh, uh, when you pray, you know, um, ask God to uh, issue his command, to issue his decree of victory over your life, victory over uh, sickness, victory over bondages, victory over strongholds in your life. Um, uh, uh, you know, just um, uh, ask him and tell him, God, I like you to command and decree uh, victory over this area of my life. Whatever you are struggling with, whether it is temptations, whatever challenges, uh, whatever weaknesses, uh, you know, whether it is um, uh, health issues or whether it is uh, uh, provision for finances or breakthrough at your workplace or your job or your business just say god you know i'm just praying and i like you god to uh, command and to decree victory uh, in this area of my um, life and here this word victory is uh, the hebrew word is 
Yeshua from the word uh, and the same uh, word we get the name Jesus and Yeshua actually means salvation which means salvation we know is a very comprehensive holistic word uh, the Greek word for salvation in new, the New Testament it's sozo which means uh, you know um, uh, healing, wholeness, uh, uh, deliverance from all harm and danger, prosperity, preservation from every attack, uh, every work of the evil ones. So, you know, when we're when we're saying God, uh, uh, you know, uh, we like you to command uh, uh, and decree victory or salvation over. Uh, this area of your life and even as you say it you know say God when you speak your word when you declare your word I believe that it is done I believe that it is and yes and amen I believe that even as you um, issue this command and decree that it is a done thing in my um, life okay so not only can we praise and worship God as king but also you know um, we can uh, when we pray we can acknowledge him as king and we can ask him and request him to issue commands and decrees uh, over uh, of victory over whatever area in our lives we are struggling or uh, we are facing challenges um, with now we look at some of the insights um, uh, of God as King, um, which is adapted from this book, Rediscovering uh, the Kingdom by Miles Munmore. Okay, so the first thing is here is as King, God is the final authority. Okay, is His authority is inherent in who He is. Uh, you know, no one brought God into power. No one can remove him out of power. Uh, he does not derive his authority from anyone uh, or from others. Uh, he is the final authority uh, and he does not derive or uh, receive his authority from anyone. So as king, he is the final authority. The second uh, insight as king is that God's word is also his command. Okay, and uh, his law is the final command in his uh, kingdom, and nobody can debate about whether the command is right or wrong, the rule is right or wrong, or the law is right or wrong. No one can vote whether it, you know, we want to follow it or not, you know. But his word is the final command. Uh, the third insight we can receive that as God, uh, uh, as King, is that his presence is also. Uh, God's presence is also the place of all kingdom authority and glory. So wherever his uh, kingdom reign and rule is uh, present, his presence is also uh, manifested there. And his presence is manifested uh, 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 by his glory of who he is and what he does. And we can see God's authority and his power just uh, manifesting in that uh, place. So when you enter the presence of the king, you're actually entering the presence of his glory and his authority and that is what the the israelites uh, you know um, uh, they uh, experienced or so they en or they encountered god when um, you know, when, when they were um, uh, in the wilderness, when the, the the cloud of glory would come on the tabernacle, you know, they would just see the magnificent presence, the awesomeness, the glory, the majesty of this holy God. So, you know, uh, we have this privilege as uh, God's sons and daughters, as his heirs uh, of his kingdom and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. We have this privilege of enjoying uh, God's uh, glory and his authority uh, through his presence. Okay, And as king, uh, God's name represents his authority. We know that, you know, um, uh, when we say so-and-so has done it, uh, or, so sorry, when we say that so-and-so has said this, uh, then, you know, Everybody has to just follow it. Like, for example, uh, at church office, when we say pastor said, you know, we need to get this done, then there is no, you know, arguing or there is no uh, thinking about it. You know, we all need to get it done um, just the way it has been said because, uh, you know, pastor's name carries his authority and he is the authority figure here in this place. And so also when you are working for your own bosses, when your boss says something, you know, you need to do it or at home when your parents, you're under the authority of your parents you know when your parents tell you something uh, or uh, you know when you're communicating what uh, your father has said to your sister you said you know dad said that we need to do it then 
you know there's no arguing there's uh, you know no saying no about it we just have to get it uh, done so god's name uh, you know carries uh, his authority so when we speak his name uh, you know um, uh, it carries authority it carries power and we know that when we speak his name before uh, demons and principalities and powers uh, in the dark uh, spiritual realms you know they all bow their knees because God's name the name of Jesus which is a name above every other name carries authority carries uh, power okay and the fifth facet of uh, insight that we see uh, of God as king is that as uh, king, God's kingdom is an expression of who he is. Okay, uh, uh, through his name, uh, through his uh, who he is and what he does, his nature, his attributes, uh, you know, um, uh, we, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his attributes, his name or his character is an expression of who he is. And this expression can be seen in his uh, kingdom. Okay, so... Um, We'll give you an example of how, uh, as king, God's kingdom is an expression of uh, uh, who he is, uh, uh, what he does, his nature, his attributes, and his name. Uh, or we we'll look at it in Isaiah chapter 9, verse uh, 6 and uh, 7. So as king, we see that, you know, whatever happens in God's kingdom uh, is very, very important. Okay, so uh, God is very concerned about what is happening in his kingdom because he is a uh, king. And um, what God desire and, and God desires that in his kingdom uh, uh, be a true representation of who he is. So God desires that his kingdom, you know, uh, be a true representation of of who he is, uh, he is king, uh, and he does not want, uh, uh, you know, his kingdom to be treated lightly. He does not want his dominion, his authority to be treated lightly. So when things happen in his kingdom, you know, uh, he wants to make sure that it all happens as a true expression of who he uh, is okay so he wants uh, everything that happens in his kingdom uh, to be a true expression of who he is so uh, what are the facets of god as king and we look at uh, how god would like to be represented or what is the expression of who he is uh, and what he would like to be seen in his kingdom we look at it in in isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7 and this is a very uh, familiar uh, passage of scripture uh, during christmas time uh, but through this we will look at how God's name, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 the names of God uh, can be used as um, uh, uh, is used as an expression of who He is in His uh, kingdom. So, can somebody read Isaiah chapter nine, verses six and seven? Isaiah chapter nine, verse six and seven. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. Thank you, Rosalind. So here we see that the government here, the word government refers to God's kingdom. And here is a description of a king who's carrying on his shoulders the weight of his um, kingdom. Okay, And uh, we also see the different names of God that is mentioned here. And his name actually describes his nature about who he is. Okay, so his government uh, or the government of the son of God uh, and, uh, uh, you know, and what he administers here in his kingdom is an expression of who he is. Okay, so therefore the government that the son of God administers is an expression of who he is. Is. So we look at uh, some of the names of God and the meaning and what uh, God uh, chooses to express through this, uh, his name, uh, what he chooses to express of who he is in his 
kingdom. The first one is, uh, uh, the first name is, uh, that his name is Wonderful, uh, which is an expression of the miraculous. So we see here that God wants his kingdom to be saturated with the miraculous. And uh, uh, the miraculous is um, a surprise gift from God. And he wants his kingdom, uh, uh, you know, to be a kingdom where people enjoy his uh, miracles. It should be, a, he wants his kingdom to be a miraculous kingdom. So through his name, wonderful, he's, express, uh, he's expressing uh, the miraculous. The second name here we see in, uh, in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7 is uh, uh, the name counselor. Okay, so uh, in the Hebrew, it is advisor and it's an expression of the wisdom of God. So as king, uh, you know, he's a counselor in his kingdom, which means he's, uh, he's uh, uh, a God, he's a king who is wise and he wants his kingdom to be filled with his uh, wisdom. And he wants his people to be working with the wisdom of God. God. So even as we're looking at these names of God, it's not just something that we're just uh, looking at it, but even as we're looking at it and we are part of God's kingdom, you know, we need to speak this, uh, you know, uh, over uh, 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 the, the domain that God is given to us. So, uh, you know, whatever domain that God has given to you or uh, wherever you are establishing or is called you to establish his kingdom, you can say, God, I want your kingdom here uh, in the place that you have established me to be an expression of the miraculous even as you want your kingdom to be saturated with the miraculous you know god i want to see mighty miracles flowing out um in and through my life and then you can say god even as you are the counselor which is an expression of your wisdom uh god you want your kingdom to be filled with wisdom and you can say god uh you know i want to walk in the wisdom of god and uh, wherever you place me i want to flow through the wisdom uh, that you have given me that you want uh, to be revealed in your kingdom the third name of god we see here is mighty god which is uh, which is the name of god and is an expression of god's power that he is omnipotent okay so as the omnipotent ruler as the king of the kingdom you know nothing can obstruct god's plan and purpose in his uh, kingdom and he wants uh, his power and uh, he wants his plan and his purpose to be established uh, in his kingdom and whatever he plans and purposes he wants it to be fulfilled in his uh, kingdom and no power on earth can stop it so even as you are uh, you know uh, 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 um, uh, you know, representing God's kingdom uh, here on earth, you can say, God, you know, even as this is your plan and your purpose that all men be saved, I want everybody in uh, the geographical area that you have placed me, you know, I want them to come to your uh, saving grace. I want them to uh, receive salvation. I want them to, uh, you know, experience the miraculous. And uh, uh, if God has given you some specific plan and purpose um, for your ministry, for the area where you're working you know you can say god uh, uh, there's no power on earth no power uh, uh, the demonic forces that can stop this from uh, you know being fulfilled in your kingdom because you are mighty god because you are omnipotent and the last name uh, second last name of god we see here is everlasting father you know it's an expression of um, uh, of god's compassion his love his care his provision just as a father is compassionate gracious uh, you know cares for his family provides for his family in the same way you know um, uh, God the father is a father towards us he loves his children he cares for us he protects us and he um, provides for us so anytime you lack anything you can just declare this um, expression of God's uh, 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 of na his name in uh, you know uh, in your in your life because you know the kingdom is within us and the kingdom is even around us and so we just say God you are a father uh, I just believe that you would provide uh, for this need even as uh, uh, you take care of your children you're gracious and compassionate you care for me God you will provide for me or you will provide for or, uh, the people in your geographical area whatever situations people in your geographical area are going through whatever situations they're going through you can just speak uh, uh, the name of the everlasting father and just believe that uh, you know this will be a 
true expression of his kingdom and you will see it uh, manifested even as you declare it and you decree it in your life and in your geographical area. And the last name of God we see here is the Prince of Peace, which is an expression of um, uh, Shalom. And as a king, uh, you know, God wants in his kingdom uh, to be a kingdom where there is wholeness, there's uh, health, there's prosperity, there's um, well-being, um, there is total well-being. So you can just declare this um, over your life, over your family, uh, over the uh, area that God has given you and saying, God, in your kingdom, I just declare your name your name as Prince of Peace, and I just uh, believe that this true expression of who you are uh, will be manifested in our um, kingdom. So we see here that uh, in, in, in God's kingdom, he desires his kingdom to be an expression of himself. So uh, it's important to know that we don't just look at one aspect of God, but when we relate to God, when we pray, when we worship him, we need to relate uh, to him uh, in his entirety of who he is, not just choosing, you know, specific aspects. Of course, when we go through situations, we speak, uh, you know, different, uh, the names of God, and we, we, we want to see that ex be expressed, manifested in God's kingdom. But here, uh, we're saying that, you know, uh, we need to look at God and relate to him uh, in totality for who he is. Okay, uh, we need to represent God for all who he is uh, and just representing him for certain aspects of who he is. Uh, you know, there can be a danger in that because when we do that, we will misrepresent him uh, and we will not represent the full facet of who God is um, as king. So it's important for us to embrace all the aspects of his uh, kingdom because when we just focus on one or two, it prevents uh, you know, people from knowing who God really is is okay so those are some of um, uh, you know um, the different facets of god through his name uh, which we can declare and decree uh, it to be an expression of his kingdom because he desires that who he is uh, to be an expression uh, uh, of himself in his kingdom Okay, and as king, God is to be feared and honored. We read about this in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse uh, 7 and 10. It says, um, you know, um, wise men of the nations and in all of their kingdoms, there is none like you. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 7 and 7 and 10 says, Who would not fear you, O king of the nations, for this is your rightful due. For among all the wise men of the nations, in all their kingdoms, there is none like you. So there is none like God in all the nations, in all the kingdoms of the earth, uh, and hence he is to be feared and honored. Uh, in the same, you know, line of thought, we um, we look at King Nebuchadnezzar, who brings one of the finest tributes uh, to God, uh, and we see this in the Bible in uh, uh, Daniel chapter 4, verses 37, 34 to 37. Uh, we know that King Nebuchadnezzar was the great and powerful king and ruler of a great and mighty powerful uh, empire. Uh, but we see that because of his pride, he loses his mind and then he becomes like an animal living in the wild. But when he comes back to his um, uh, senses, he receives his right mind. He, uh, he realizes uh, his, uh, you know, his smallness, uh, his, uh, his fragileness, his, uh, uh, his pride, his weakness compared uh, to, you know, uh, the great king. And uh, so uh, that's what he brings a tribute uh, to God in Daniel chapter 4, verses 34 to 37. So can somebody read that, please? Daniel chapter 4, verses 34 to 37. Daniel chapter 4, verse 34 to 37. And at the end of time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lift my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me. And I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, no one can restrain his hand or say to him, What have you done? At the same time, my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and my 
and splendor returned to me. My counselors and nobles restored to me. I was restored to my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all of whose work are truth and his ways justice, and those who walk in pride he is able to put down. Amen. Thank you, Jafina. So here we see that, uh, you know, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, you know, acknowledges uh, God as uh, and extols God as king and praises him uh, for he, who he is. He realizes there is no greater king, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, than God. And he says, I now realize there is a king greater than me, so, which means that he realizes there is a God, uh, that God is greater than even him. There's a king that is greater even uh, than he, uh, and that is God. And so he says, uh, you know, now since I know that there is a king who is greater than me, and that is God, I want to uh, worship him. So the king of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, you know, our king is to be feared and is to be honored. And we read this in many places in the Bible, uh, in, uh, in the New Testament, uh, where it talks about um, uh, God as king in First Timothy chapter 1 verse 17 and First Timothy uh, chapter 6 verse 15, uh, where Paul is writing to Timothy and he says, now to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible to God, who alone is wise, uh, be honor and glory forever and ever. Okay, and then he also mentions in uh, chapter 6, verse 15. Can somebody read that, please? First Timothy chapter 6, verse 15. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 15. Can somebody read that? First Timothy chapter 6, verse 15 which he will manifest in his own time, he who is the blessed and only potent, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you, Sinatoli. So here uh, we see, you know, the king is, uh, of the kingdom is uh, worshipped uh, for uh, him being eternal, immortal, invisible, uh, and his praise for who he uh, is and also we need to fear and honor this uh, king. Now we look at how Jesus introduced his kingdom, and uh, it's important for us to uh, to to understand this because um, we believe and we take the same approach, just like Jesus took. Uh, you know, we will be able to see the establishment. We will be able to see the furtherance of the spiritual kingdom of. God. Uh, remember in, in the, in the uh, last week in uh, class one, I said that there are two uh, different dimensions of the kingdom. There is the spiritual kingdom and there is the natural kingdom. Uh, what we're experiencing now is the spiritual kingdom. Uh, what we will experience when Jesus comes again the second time is his natural kingdom. Uh, you know, when he overthrows all the nations, the kings of the world at the, at the battle of the Armageddon and he will establish his kingdom reign and rule and his, uh, we will see him reigning here on the earth in Jerusalem and we will be, uh, you know, a king, uh, citizens of that uh, natural kingdom. But for now, we are, you know, a part of the spiritual kingdom of God. So it's important for us to understand how Jesus introduced his kingdom so that, uh, you know, we will take the same approach in, you uh, you know, establishing or uh, in the furtherance of the spiritual kingdom of uh, God. So we see that, you know, uh, the John the Baptist uh, was the forerunner for Jesus. And, um, you know, he had the greatest honor of, um, you know, being the forerunner of the king. And he also announced uh, the kingdom of heaven has come. We read this in Matthew chapter 3, um, verse 2. Um, but we see that, uh, uh, you know, Jesus says in, uh, and we know also know that, you know, John the Baptist once is the greatest among the, greatest among the Old Testament 
prophets. Okay, so John th the Baptist was the greatest among uh, the Old Covenant prophets or the Old Testament uh, uh, prophets. But it's interesting to read what Jesus says in Luke chapter 7, verse 28. Jesus uh, declared uh, in Luke chapter 7, verse 28, For I say to you, among those born of woman, there is no one, uh, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Okay, it's a very interesting thing uh, that Jesus says. Here we see that, uh, you know, Jesus is declaring or saying that the least person in the kingdom of God is even greater than John. Okay, in the kingdom of God, the least person in the kingdom of God is even greater than John the Baptist. And what does he say about John the Baptist? He says John the Baptist is one of the greatest uh, or is the greatest prophets of all the Old Testament prophets. And Jesus is also declaring that those who are least in the kingdom of God, you know, is they are even greater than John the Baptist, who was the greatest of the Old Testament um, prophets. And so he was, here we see that, you know, even though John the Baptist had the, was, um, the, had the greatest honor of being the forerunner of uh, the king, and he had the, uh, uh, the great privilege of uh, announcing or preaching about the coming of the kingdom of heaven, um, but we see that, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, he uh, he he could not be part of the kingdom, though he had the honor of announcing uh, the, the kingdom, though he had the honor of being the forerunner of the king, but we see that he couldn't be part of the kingdom. Why couldn't he be part of the kingdom? Because Jesus had not yet died on the cross and he had not yet, uh, uh, you know, rose again from the uh, dead. So, uh, you know, uh, I wanted to just see the great privilege that uh, you and I have as kingdom citizens. That, you know, even as we are born again into the kingdom of God, we are born again into a realm of a spiritual experience of position and authority that none of them who were, uh, you know, who lived before uh, Jesus uh, died and rose again could enjoy this uh, privilege because they were not uh, born again and hence they could not enjoy this privilege. So you and I are very privileged to be part of God's uh, kingdom, uh, to be part of uh, the kingdom, uh, of his kingdom, where his, uh, we experience uh, his, uh, you know, his, uh, his spiritual realm, we experience our position, our authority that God has uh, given to us. So, uh, you know, we not only say that God let your kingdom come and let your will be done, or uh, we not only say that, you know, the king is coming soon and he's going to establish his natural kingdom, but we say that the kingdom is in us, the king is in us, his rule and his reign uh, uh, is, you know, is manifested in and through me. And that is a privilege that you and I have, uh, which sometimes we really don't know. We are so blinded to this truth to this fact uh, we don't even realize that we are in the kingdom and the kingdom is in us okay we need to understand this privilege we need to uh, know our position and authority and uh, we also need to um, uh, you know we also need to understand uh, the approach that Jesus took um, uh, in establishing his kingdom so that we can, you know, establish uh, and see the furtherance of his spiritual uh, kingdom. So we look at, uh, you know, um, the threefold approach that Jesus took uh, through introducing his kingdom. It's very simple. Uh, how did Jesus introduce his kingdom here on earth when he was here on, when he lived here on this earth? How did Jesus uh, introduce his kingdom? He preached about the kingdom. Okay, he preached. What else did he do? He demonstrated the power. Yes, he demonstrated the power and he also taught. Okay, he preached, he taught, and he demonstrated the power of the kingdom through mighty signs, miracles, and uh, wonders and we read about this uh, in in Matthew chapter 4 verses 17 and 23 
uh, Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 and Luke chapter 4 verse 43 uh, and in all of these three passages which is given to us on page number 20 uh, it says you know uh, Jesus began to preach and say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand uh, and he went about Galilee teaching uh, uh, in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and uh, diseases. Matthew 9, 35, we also see that Jesus went about in all the cities, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and um, disease. And in Luke chapter 4, verse 43, um, Jesus says that, you know, he must preach the kingdom of God uh, in all the cities uh, because he says for this purpose, he was um, sent. So we see that, you know, the church today sometimes, um, you know, um, neglects or overlooks or undermines this whole aspect of the kingdom of God. But we see that the kingdom of God is so important uh, in, um, in the plan and the purpose of God, which he had even before the foundations of the world. And we see that even in Jesus' life and his ministry, he spent his, his three years which was uh, all the three years that he lived here on, uh, you know, he did his ministry here on earth. Uh, and um, all these three years, he he preached about the kingdom, he taught about the kingdom, and he demonstrated the power of the uh, kingdom. And even as kingdom citizens, as sons and daughters, as heirs and of God and co-heirs uh, with Christ Jesus in his kingdom, where we are given the authority and the power and the dominion and his government um, and the authority to rule and reign here, we too need to teach, preach, and demonstrate the power of the kingdom of God. Okay, so look, let's look at um, uh, the first aspect of how we can, um, you know, approach the kingdom of uh, God. The first aspect is preaching the good news about the kingdom of God. Okay, now if we were to uh, herald the good news of the kingdom of God, uh, what would we have done? Okay, you know, we would have said, you know, the king has conquered his enemy, which is Satan. He has won over him. He has uh, won victory over him on the cross. He's uh, broken every power of the enemy. He's uh, taken back his um, authority. And um, we can all, we all can, we can also pre teach them and say that, you know, he's a God of peace who has reconciled us back to the Father. He's brought peace. He's brought shalom uh, to everyone in his kingdom. And and uh, we can also say that his kingdom is a kingdom where, uh, you know, is a true expression of who he is and what he uh, does. And we can, you know, mention all what we had uh, uh, we had looked at in as the facets of the king in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, that he's wonderful. Uh, his kingdom is an expression of the miraculous. His kingdom is an expression of his wisdom, where he wants his wisdom to see, uh, to be filling his uh, kingdom and everyone to flow in the wisdom of God. Uh, you know, his uh, kingdom is an expression of uh, his power. Um, his kingdom is an expression of uh, God's compassion, his love, his care, uh, where we see the father heart of God. And his, express his kingdom is an expression of uh, shalom, of the peace of God, the wholeness, the total well-being of, um, of, of his people. So, and uh, even as we teach this to people, we, could, you know, we can invite them and say, would you like to be a part of this kingdom? Would you like to enter this kingdom? Uh, you know, uh, how this kingdom has overcome all other kingdoms and how this king is so wonderful um, and just telling the people that you know you need to be part of this kingdom just to enjoy um, you know the blessings and the privilege the honor and the position that we receive as sons and daughters um, in this kingdom so you and I have a privilege and uh, being part of this kingdom and as we have you know been uh, as I've been saying it's also a responsibility uh, for us that God has given us a God-given responsibility to advance this kingdom, uh, to preach uh, the kingdom, to teach the uh, the kingdom, uh, uh, you know, to preach about the king and and to teach about the king uh, who is uh, who has uh, given us his um, kingdom. Okay, so that is about preaching the good news about the kingdom of God. Now we look at uh, teaching. Okay, uh, through his teaching, we uh, about the kingdom of God, uh, we see that Jesus was actually transforming 
the minds of the people and uh, the hearts and minds of the people and also the way the, the, the people lived. So the main purpose of, uh, of why Jesus was, um, you know, teaching about the kingdom of God is, is yes, making it known that, you know, he's uh, ushering the kingdom of God and how the kingdom of God is, what are the facets, the different aspects of the kingdom of God. But even as he was doing it, he was, um, you know, trying to bring about a transformation in the hearts and the minds of people and also, uh, you know, that translating into how uh, the people lived, you know, being mindful of who they are, that they're kingdom citizens, what authority, dominion, power uh, they have, what position uh, that they have been um, given. So we look at some of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, aspects of what Jesus taught about uh, his kingdom, okay, uh, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, the Beatitudes, Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in, the, in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, we'll stop here. It's uh, time for our break. Um, we'll go for our break and come back. And uh, then if you have any questions, we will uh, I will answer your questions. And then we will continue with uh, our lesson. Okay.